one of the sweetest aspects of Christmas is we find ourselves in the situation of being inspired by a newborn baby, just like baby Gopal. And the great saint Anandamoy Ma would refer to most of the men she, she spoke to as Baba, Father. And she said to one disciple, think of me as your daughter and love me. She was asking him to, to care for her and always be attentive to her needs. And this is a very interesting attitude for this disciple to have towards his guru, to treat her like a little daughter. And how do parents relate to a baby? Of course, they give themselves completely to every need that the child might have out of sheer love. Um, and the baby is helpless without the constant care of the parent, 24-7. And what can you ask of a baby? Nothing. He's entirely dependent on you and your attention. And you just want to give yourself as fully as your heart can to this helpless, um, lovable little child. And a child might forget his mother for long periods of time. But the, never, but the mother never forgets the child. Always in her thoughts is the welfare of her child. And Yoganandaji would say that God has everything, except one thing, except our love. And we can choose to give that love. We can choose to withhold that love. And relating to the divine as a child is a way of completely offering ourselves in devotion. There's no, there's no question of holding back. And so this, uh, what uh, Yoganandaji, uh, the question that Yoganandaji raises, it doesn't come into play that we don't hold back because we give everything. And so, regarding our higher self, our higher consciousness, our God aspiration as a little child who needs constant attention, or we might even say like a little plant who needs to be watered, who needs to be cared for. And this is how our spiritual life is. It needs our attention, or like the little plant, it withers and dies. Like the little baby, I, I hate to say. <laughs> and the, one of the beauties of Christmas is to be able to adore God as this helpless infant. And at this time of the year, the baby comes to us seeking our love. And so let's open our hearts as completely as we can to the Christ child, but more deeply to the consciousness that Christ came to bring us. And all the great masters and our gurus have come to bring us and to open our hearts, to expand our hearts. Yoganandaji would say, you know, how can a little cup hold the whole ocean. If our consciousness is open only as big as a little cup, how much can we carry? How much can we hold? Not very much water, the cup holding water, but if, if we open our heart to fill, to expand into the whole ocean, this is what the opportunity of Christmas gives us to expand our consciousness as big as that ocean. Thank you.
It's been wonderful this week, um, going back over the story of the birth of the Christ child. And uh, uh, we were reading a little bit amongst ourselves yesterday, and the quote from the Bible is that uh, the angel comes and tells Mary, you know, Mary says, how is it possible I'm going to have a holy child because I've never known a man? And he says, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And this, this thing, that this holy thing that will be produced will be the Son of God. And Yogananda said, the Holy Ghost is the Om vibration. The Om vibration gives birth to the Son of God. And, and we think of the Om Tat Sat, you know, so the Om vibration Tat is the reflection of God in creation. So Yogananda would say, Tat is the Son. So the reflection of unmanifest, unchanging God, spirit, in creation, is that taught. And it's also what the Christians called the Son of God. The only begotten Son is that reflection of God that is in every atom of creation. And then you have sat, unmanifest spirit. So om, tat, sat. And then the Christian trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Father is unmanifest spirit. Son is his reflection in creation. In every atom of creation is that spirit, is that stillness of God in every atom. But how do you get to that stillness in creation? You have to go through the, through the mother. The mother produces it. The, the vibration of Om is what manifests creation. And in the center of every movement, is stillness. There's stillness at the center of every moment. Like Hong Sa, the center of the breath is stillness. So Yogananda teaches, first thing, let's get to that stillness, get beyond creation. Yogananda tells us, do not focus on the Om vibration. Focus on the source of that vibration. What is the source? It's God, unmanifest spirit. So. When we think of the Christ child being born within, it's born, let's go to Divine Mother first. Let's focus on Om, on creation, the divine vibration. Tune into Om, and through that Divine Mother, we can find the sun, the stillness at the center. Just like you can think of many um, pieces of glass on the ground in the sun, each one of those pieces of glass will reflect the sunlight. Sun, the, the light is in every piece of glass. So that's how, how, that's how the Father can be in every child. That's how Christ consciousness can be born, if we're still enough to receive that light and reflect that light. When we think of the eight-hour meditation we just had, the Christmas meditation we had last Sunday, it was so still. We were so blessed with stillness. And we need to take that time to be still in order to have that birth of God within us. Without that stillness, how can we receive? How can we receive that Christ child? How can we receive the Guru within us if we're just too busy and we're moving too much? When you think of... Um, uh, I don't know, I just forgot my train of thought there. But oh, when you think of when Christ was born in the stable, in the manger, who did the angels come and tell? Shepherds. The shepherds, what were they doing? They were outside being quiet, just maybe sitting in the field, watching over their sheep, but I bet you they weren't moving around very much. They were just quiet and still. And they could hear the voice saying, Christ is being born, go see. And so I think that the eight-hour meditation master started in 1930s. It's like, be still. If you want to really experience the Christ consciousness, that stillness at the center of everything, you have to make an effort and let it be born inside. Because whatever we receive will change us. And if we can receive that stillness, that peace, unchanging peace, it will change us. 
what are we receiving? We are, our consciousness will be changed by anything we receive. So especially at this time, be, be very aware of what we are receiving, what influences we're taking into ourselves, because it will change our consciousness. You know, be very aware. What are we receiving? So Divine Mother or Mary received the Christ child. What do we want to receive? We want to open ourselves and receive peace, calmness, love, light, and we want to be reflections of that light. And so at this time when we have prayer in our hearts, God, I want to merge with your stillness, with your unchanging peace, with your ever-expanding light, with your never-ending joy. I want to merge with it. I want to receive it and merge with it. That yearning from our heart is what will draw the birth of the avatar. It's what will draw the birth of Christ within us. This is what, how Krishna incarnates. This is how the avatar descends to each of us, within us. And yet, as a people, as we yearn and pray for that peace, the avatar comes to the world. He comes not only within us, but he comes for the world also. It's like, let there be peace on earth, but let it begin with me. It has to be born in me first, and then it can be born in the world. So that is, I think, our highest goal at this time of Christmas and the birth of any great avatar that we can honor them the most by letting their consciousness be born within us, that we take the time to be still and open our hearts, pray for them to come, and they will be born within us. God bless you.